Hello guys, I am Professor Fayaz Karadi from Department of Mechanical Engineering. In this session, we are going to discuss the next topic from unit number two is spiral gear or skew gear or crossed helical gear. From theory of machine subject, in this lecture, we are concentrating or we are going to discuss the basic part of spiral gear and center distance. What is the formula for center distance of spiral gear? In front of you, you can see the rotating image of pair of spiral gear. The spiral gear are used to transmit the power from one shaft to another, which are non-parallel and non-intersecting. In case of helical gear, the two gears, the axis of rotation of two gear are parallel to each other. In case of spur gear, the axis of rotation is again parallel to each other. But in case of spiral gear, the axis of rotation of both the gears are non-parallel. When the axis of rotation of both the gears are non-parallel, that means they will intersect at each other at some location, at somewhere else. But these are non intersecting also. That means both the axis of rotation of gears are also in different planes. So that these axis of both the gears are non intersecting also. So that is the speciality of this gear is the axis of rotation of both the gears are non-parallel, also non-intersecting. In case of helical gear, the line of contact, the contact between two gears are line contact. Initially, there is a point contact, but gradually contact goes on increasing and there is a line contact. But in case of spiral gear, there is continuous a point contact is there between two gears. Why this happening? Because these two gears, the axis of rotation of two gears are non-parallel and non-intersecting. Non-intersecting and these, uh, the axis of rotation of both the gears are in different plane. That's why continuously there is only a point contact. Okay. When the contact between two gears is a point contact, at that time, these gears are not applicable for transmitting high power. Okay, due to the point contact between two spiral gears, these gears are not used for high power transmission. High power transfer. So, when a low load carrying capacity is less, at that time, spiral gears are used. Okay. And in case of helical gear, in case of helical gear, we have already uh, discussed that both the gears have opposite hand of helix. Both the gears. If pinion is left-handed, at that time, meshing gear is right-handed or vice versa. But in case of spiral gear, that case is not happening they may be opposite handed or they may be same hand of helix that means if smaller wheel is left handed at the same time gear also will be left handed and if pinion is right handed at the same time the gear will be may be right handed or may not be right handed or left handed and what is left hand gear and what is right hand gear? We have already discussed in previous uh, session of uh, helical gear. Okay. Now come to the next point. Uh, in spiral gear, uh, the pitch circle diameter are not in pro proportion of their tooth ratio. In spiral gear, the pitch circle diameter are not in proportion of their tooth ratio because the gear having larger number of teeth may be the smaller in diameter. 
in case of spiral gear or uh, spur gear uh, if uh, teeth number of quantity of teeth if goes increasing the diameter obviously goes on increasing but the case is not happening here if diameter is smaller at that time number of teeth will be larger so in case of spiral gear the term pinion and gear are not used generally what is our assumption the smaller wheel is we call it as a pinion and the larger wheel we will call it as a gear okay and second assumption or in our session is a pinion is always driver and gear is always driven okay but on the basis of size on the basis of size in case of spiral gear pinion and gear are not these terms are not used here so at that time as you can see in the figure there is a gear a and gear b spiral gear a and spiral gear b it is not denoted by pinion and this is a gear okay this may uh, spiral gear a is driven spiral gear b is driven this is our assumption okay but as per the size of gears we not term it as a pinion it as a gear okay so we term it as a gear a and gear b as the helix angle may be same or different for two gears as the helix angle in case of a uh, helical gear the helix angle uh, for both the gears will be same alpha will be same uh, but in case of uh, uh, spiral gear the helix angle may be same or different for two gears so uh, the uh, uh, transverse module mt is not same if helix angle is same mt will be same but helix angle will be different for two gears the transverse module mt is not same so when mt is not same that gear is denoted by not transverse module it is denoted by normal module okay due to that factor transverse module is not same at that time normal module will come into existence for defining the for specifying the size of spiral gear so remember this point the normal module mn is used to specify the size of spiral gear okay so this formula you have to remember for solving the numericals mn normal module is equal to pn normal pitch okay divided by pi already we have discussed that formula in case of spur gear circular pitch is equal to pi into module circular pitch pc is equal to pi into module that we have derived in um, in spur gear okay on same formula on the basis of that formula we can say that normal module is equal to instead of circular pitch you have to write down here normal pitch divided by pi okay why normal pitch and why normal module is taken into consideration because transverse module is not same for both the gears so normal module mn is equal to pn divided by pi remember this formula for solving the neighboring term come to the next point spiral angle alpha and shaft angle theta what is shaft angle this new angle is introduced in spiral gear in spur gear we introduce first angle that is phi what is that phi that is a pressure angle okay now next we uh, studied a uh, helical gear in case of helical gear the new angle it introduced that is alpha and that alpha is helical helix of that uh, teeth a teeth inclination of teeth with the axis of rotation is helix angle alpha here third angle is introduced that is a theta and that theta is sharp angle. okay oh, so what is spiral angle spiral angle in spiral gear helix angle is called as a spiral angle. okay alpha 
so the same term the same helix angle is used here but the name is changed only here that is a spiral angle in case of helix angle and that is uh, nothing but again the teeth uh, the inclination of teeth with the axis of rotation that is a spiral angle the angle is same in case of helical gear and in case of spiral gear only name is changed in case of a uh, helical gear helix angle uh, we term it as helix angle and in case of spiral angle spiral gear the same angle is term as a spiral angle spiral gear. okay now uh, what is shaft angle theta it is denoted it is defined as the angle through which the axis of one shaft must be rotated in order to bring it parallel to the axis of other shaft okay that is the axis of rotation for gear b okay this is rotated in such a way that this axis of rotation will be parallel to this axis of rotation for gear a this axis of rotation for gear a okay this gear a as per definition this axis of rotation is rotated in such a way that it will be make parallel to the other axis of rotation for another gear that is gear b okay this axis is rotated in such a way that this will become parallel to the axis of rotation for another gear for machine gear so this angle that angle of rotation of the axis this angle of rotation to make it is a parallel for another gear another machine gear is theta and that is the call as shaft angle shaft angle okay shaft angle theta is defined as the angle through which the axis of one shaft must be rotated in order to bring it parallel to the axis of other shaft and the two shaft are rotating in opposite direction at the same time it should be rotated in opposite direction okay now if alpha a and alpha b be the spiral angle for gear a and b respectively okay at that time theta will become here theta is equal to alpha a plus alpha b if the hand of helix for both the gears will be same okay theta this will be alpha a plus alpha b when it will become when gear a and gear b are left handed or gear a and gear b will be left right handed both the hand of helix will be same at that alpha a and alpha b will, will become theta will become summation of both the helix okay theta is equal to when there will be addition when the hand of helix will be same hand of helix both the gears will be left handed or right handed at the time there will be addition of helix angle okay and when theta is equal to alpha a minus alpha b or alpha b minus alpha a when the helix of both the gears will be opposite if one is a left handed and another is a right handed at that time there will be subtraction of helix angle okay when the hand of helix will be opposite opposite handed helix are there at that time subtraction of helix angle will be there theta is equal to alpha a or alpha a minus alpha b or alpha b minus alpha a whatever is bigger alpha b or alpha a okay clear this point theta is equal to alpha a plus alpha b when the helix for both the gears will be same handed 
and there will be subtraction alpha a minus alpha b or alpha b minus alpha a uh, at the when the helix of both the gears will be different okay now come to the next point uh, in, that is nothing but center distance so what is the center distance that is the axis of rotation and this is the axis of a rotation okay the center to center distance center to center. this is a piece of diameter of gear a this is piece of diameter of gear b so uh, what will be the formula for center distance center distance is equal to piece of diameter b a plus piece of diameter b b divided by 2 or r a plus r b center distance is equal to r a plus r b from this uh, figure you can see you can understand what is center distance center distance is equal to r a plus r b or b a plus d b divided by 2 okay the center distance between a pair of spiral gear is the shorted distance why it is called as a shorted distance because the axis of the rotation for both the gear will be inter intersecting somewhere else okay intersecting somewhere else so the shorted distance you have to consider for finding the center distance shorted distance between two shafts making any angle between them any angle assume both the gear have same hand of helix and normal pitch or normal model is same okay so for finding the center distance what is our assumption both the gears are same hand of helix and normal pitch or normal model is same so let t a and t b as you know the number of teeth on spiral gear a and b respectively alpha a and alpha b is the uh, spiral angle of gear a and b d a and d b are p circle diameter of b gear a and gear b in mm respectively and normal model I mean, normal model for both the gear I mean, in mm so you remember if you remember that uh, we have already uh, find out center distance for helical gear center distance for helical gear the formula for center distance is mn normal value divided by 2 cos alpha into tp plus tg in case of helical gear already we have divided i show you uh, the slide of that previous session terminology in that we are discussing terminology in helical gear center distance center distance is equal to that transverse model will be considered small t is equal to mt transverse model into tp teeth on pinion plus mt why mt mt is a transverse model and this this is the same for both the gears okay mt into tg uh, that will derive uh, uh, for model formula model is equal to d by t ratio of d by t so what is d d is equal to m into t okay mt into tg divided by 2 divided by this formula divided by 2 so mt we will take common as these are this is same for both the gears so mt will become common here mt divided by 2 in bracket tp plus tg okay but what is mt mt we have already discussed uh, the formula for mt mn is equal to mt cos alpha already we have divided that mn is equal to mt cos alpha so what is the value of mt mn divided by cos alpha so putting the value of mt in this formula mn divided by cos alpha mn divided by cos alpha into 2 into tp plus tg that we have already discussed in helical gear okay the same formula i am using here also center distance and from this formula i am finding the center distance for spiral gear what is the difference between helical gear and spiral gear mn is same that is our assumption mn normal module that's why we are taking that formula this value is same for both the gears okay so we are taking that formula instead of mt we are using that m mt in terms of mn okay so mn is same so mn we are taking common 2 is same for both the gears so we are taking 
common this factor become common mn divided by 2 okay what is tp here we are defining tp as ta teton gear a because there is no pinion no gear just we are specifying gear a and gear b okay so instead of tp we are writing here ta and cos alpha this term alpha is different for both the gears maybe different maybe same okay so alpha <coughs> is different so we can't take that factor as a common okay so in this bracket we write down cos alpha for gear a okay plus here t instead of tg we are writing here teeth on gear b tp divided by cos of cos alpha of gear b okay so the formula for center distance will become here mn divided by 2 into bracket ta divided by cos alpha a plus tb divided by cos alpha b in case of spiral gear that is the formula for center distance for spiral gear so remember these formulas for, for solving the numericals and one numerical may compulsory come in the examination okay guys so in today's session uh, we understood what is the spiral gear uh, and different between uh, helical gear and spiral gear uh, so from this uh, formula uh, the students or uh, you can uh, able to solve the numericals to find out the center distance okay thank you thank you so much here